Hey y'all, hey! Welcome back to the channel. I am Tanisha Davis. This is the Fun and Budget Act where we talk about all things fun, all things budget, and we just really like to dive into the story of what our money is doing. There are no secrets here. In this video, we are going to talk about our April financial plan. Y'all ready? I'm ready. Let's talk about it. First of all, what we know with everything that's going on in the world today is nothing is guaranteed, not even our income. So with the income that I am set to make, I did make a plan for it. And we're going to talk about that plan, okay? Now, in the month of April, I plan on making $10,605. This is my take home pay. This is the money after taxes. This is the money after most of my payroll deductions. And this is the money that I expect to hit my bank account. Now, what I already took out of this income is rent because um, I share with you guys in the last video, in the March video, that I hadn't received rent for the month of March for my tenant. And I, um, don't necessarily expect I'm receiving it in April because if I haven't received it in March, why would I receive it in April when things have gotten so much worse between then and now? So we're not even going to bank on that. Also with my son, he normally pays rent because of what's happening and I know that his income was affected and he relies on taking Uber to and from work and y'all know what's happening out there. Uber rates have went up because you're no longer allowed to do Uber pool. You have to do the Uber one-on-one -on -one ride. So because of that, and I know he's paying more to get back and forth to work and, and whatsoever, I am not charging him rent for this month either. And <laughs> y'all, I have um, some tenants who was set. Oh. Okay. I have some tenants who were set to move in in May. And of course, everything is on hold right now because of what's happening. And so they already paid their first month's rent. I am going to refund them their first month's rent back. Now, I did not take that out of this budget, but what I'm going to do is just take it out of my savings. Um, which is where their money went in the first place. So I'm going to take it out of my savings to refund them their money back and let them know that when things are back to normal and their plans are back on, they have first dibs of securing a space. So we're good with that. So those are some of our um, financial things that are affecting our income in this beautiful month of April. Um, I already explained to everybody that all is well with me in my day job, that I am able to um, work from home. And so nothing has been affected there. It's actually even better because I'm not spending any money going out. I have food here at home and, um, you know, we're not going back and forth anywhere. And that is what it is. I am finding it's actually harder to work from home. Whew. Because they actually, um, ex they want you to account for all of your time. So whatever you, task you're doing, I'm keeping journals, I'm keeping notes, I'm writing on envelopes. <laughs> what I'm doing, how much it's spent for me to do. I'm making freaking game plans. I ain't never worked this hard when I was at work. So that's what's happening with that, okay? So... From that $10,605, here's what I plan on doing with it. $95 is going to go to HOA, $100 for the gas bill, $230 for the electricity bill, $121 for the water bill, which comes in quarterly, $193 for cell phones, and that is for three phones, $80 for the internet service. $120 for security systems on two homes and $153 on insurances for two cars and somebody else's insurance that I pay. Actually, I say two cars, but believe one of the only one of the cars is mine. So I actually pay insurances for two people's things. <laughs> but 
it's a blessing and I'm just so happy that I'm in a position that I'm able to do that. So it's all good. Housekeepers, $216. Now let me say this. So the housekeepers did come from March to clean the house. They, she sent me a email basically saying that they are taking extra precautions because of what's going on. They are wearing gloves. They'll be wearing masks. They'll be wearing booties and that sort of thing. And they will definitely, and they'll be paying more attention at disinfecting and, um, what is it like Clorox in the house? And the reason why I kept that appointment and I allowed them to come to my home to do that, even though I wasn't there in the house was barely messed up because I hadn't even been there all month. But the reason why I did allow that to happen because at this time, I just feel like if anybody has a living that they're still able to do with all of the shutdowns, I'm happy to play my role and to still support those businesses. Again, knowing that all is well, we're all afraid of each other now. Everybody's afraid of other humans now we're afraid that if we get too close to another human we're gonna catch something if we we're not even seeing our families nobody's going to their families homes even though we're contained in our home and we feel like in our home we're safe our families are contained in their home and they feel like in their home they're safe but just to mitigate the unknown we're not vis visiting each other human interaction is at a standstill practically I'm not afraid of other people. And like I said, I just feel that if they were still able to carry out a duty and they're taking the precautions that they need to take to carry out that duty, I am just so happy to be able to pay for that service. And I know some people have said, well, instead of letting people come do the service, just pay them anyway. We don't live that kind of life over here. I ain't doing that. <laughs> I am not paying I'm just not sending out money for nothing at all. I'm not. I mean, this is an exchange. We're exchanging. Um, so that's what happened right there. So that's why the housekeepers still came. And I still um, expect for them to come in the month of April, if all is well. Inshallah, Ashallah. For groceries and restaurants and household miscellaneous and fun miscellaneous, we don't have anything written down here because we do not budget. What we do is we be, we're be we mindful in our spending. And another thing that we've been doing here is we've been trying to support restaurants that are open here and there. Again, you know, y'all, um, cash exchange, in and out, cash flow is what makes this world go round. is what makes the economy go round. Things are shut down. So we're trying to do our part here and there as we see fit. And so it's really easy for me to get caught up in the let's order out again or let's order because we need to support these restaurants. But at the same time, this is where being mindful comes in. It's like, okay, we got some food here. So tonight I think I plan on doing, we're going to do hamburgers. I'm going to do a um, macaroni salad. I'm going to do a macaroni pasta something for the with the hamburgers. Um, so yeah, just trying to keep things balanced and again, just going with the well, with well being and everything. Um, and also because I am here and I explained to you guys in the last video that Jay did lose income. He did lose a portion of his income during this time. He's not able to work one of his jobs. Um, and so I am taking it upon myself to buy groceries and to pay for our food and stuff. He doesn't, he isn't necessarily saying that that's my job. I mean, he tries to pull out his credit card to pay for things. But I'm like, mm -mm, I got it because I know he is bringing in less money and everything. And I just want to also help relieve his stress and his worry as much as I can. And I have so much abundance. I'm so freaking abundant. And, you know, so it is all good. It is all good. Subscription services, $25. And that is for Netflix and YouTube premium this month. April, I do not have any plans of getting my hair or my nails or my lashes done because of all of the clothes, all of the businesses that are closed right now. So I have nothing set aside for that. 
This month, I was supposed to go to Asheville, North Carolina for Abraham Hicks seminar. And that seminar has been postponed. So I am looking at $900 being refunded back to me that I had already paid out for the hotel and for the seminar. Mortgage, I just refinanced my house, guys. So freaking excited. Went from a 3.25, uh, went from a 3.25 down to a 2.75, and this saves me $606 a month. So for the month of April, I do not have a mortgage payment due. My mortgage payment, my first mortgage payment is due May 1st. But because I've learned everything that I learned in refinances in the past, which I am going to do a video about, I just, I did pay my mortgage for this month. And of course, it, it all went to principal. Um, there's more of a theory behind that, but we'll share that in another video. So $3,932 went to the mortgage even though my new mortgage payment is only how much is it y'all hold on my new mortgage payment is only two thousand five hundred and eighty two dollars y'all it used to be three thousand one hundred and eighty eight dollars bam savings i'm sending i'm saving $1,500, $1,500 is also going to my 401k, $154 is going to my health savings account, and I am setting aside $650 for gifts, and at the end of the day, this leaves me with $1,536 remaining. And what do I do with that $1,536? This is what I plan on doing. First of all, I just announced in my last video in the March budget review video, a giveaway that I decided to run at the last minute. Check that video out to find out the details about that giveaway. And so of course, some of that money will go toward funding that giveaway. And then also that money will also have to fund groceries, household goods, um, restaurants, or whatever entertainment, which y'all know there's really no entertainment we could do anymore. <laughs> um, and then whatever I have left over, I apply to whatever financial goals I have going on. The main financial goal that I have going on right now is the paying off of my home. And so I try to send whatever extra that I can at the end of the month of what doesn't get spent to that goal right there. The reason why I am able to still keep up with sending extra to my mortgage, sending healthy amounts to my savings is because of one key thing. I have an emergency fund of eight months of living expenses in my bank account. Because of that, if something would or should or does happen to my income, I'm able to still pay for my lifestyle. And because of that, I'm able to send money to the same financial goals that I had before all of this. Now, had I not had all of that money saved up, the eight months saved up, what I would do is save my money. So that's what I, my advice to anybody out there would be during this time. If you don't have a healthy emergency fund, I would say about three to six months of savings saved up, I would hoard cash. I know people are out there hoarding toilet paper and hoarding water and things like that, but really I would hoard my cash. I would now at this point in time just make minimum payments to my bills, to my um, debt, credit cards, whatever. I would just make the bare minimum and I would put all of that extra money to my savings just in case. Just in case income is lost, just in case more emergencies, financial emergencies pop up, just in case you're called to be a blessing in somebody else's life at this point in time. A lot of us have kids that may require more help now more than usual, just things like that. So that's what I would do. I would just make minimum payments. I would also make sure that I call all my debtors. I would call my credit card companies just to 
see if they have anything in place to help people affect it during this time. And when you call, I would say, make sure you mention coronavirus or COVID-19 specifically and say that your income has been affected and to see what are they offering. The main thing I would look for for them to be offering is a forgiveness of interest. For them to say that they won't be charging interest for a certain amount of time or that they will also be forgiven late fees for a certain amount of time. If they tell you that they are saying that you don't have to make your payment for a month or two months or three months and that they're going to apply that to the back end of your loan, do the math on that. If you can afford to make your payments, your minimum payments, do that. But if you have to take advantage of not paying your bills for a few months, just look at the back end and what that's costing you because a lot of these companies are still charging interest and they're charging that interest on the back end. For instance, if you had a loan where your payment was about $500 a month and I don't know what the interest rate would be, hmm, something. That putting that on the back end of your loan could actually cost you 2 to $500 depending on the numbers of that loan. So ask yourself do you really want to give them an additional two to five hundred dollars? Which, in my mind, I feel like shame on them because, in my mind, I feel like they know that people are already in a tough spot, but yet some financial companies have still found a way to profit off of this. By we're going to put it on the back end and we're going to make you pay for that. We're going to charge you more interest. We're going to get more interest out of you for that. So that would be my advice. Until then, y'all, that's all I got. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a member of the Fab family. And leave a comment below and we will talk about whatever you want to talk about. Until the next video, guys. Peace.